Hello everyone, I'm back. Another video. Two videos, one week. I know you can't believe it. Smash the like. Smash the like for that. Come on. Smash the like for that. I wanted to post this video last week, but I got a little bit caught up. But I'm back with another review of Crying Woman TV. Now that's not all this channel is going to be, but for the time that I've been inside, yeah, I'm going to continue watching Crying Women TV, or Crying People TV, I should say. Because even though, you know, the women on these shows are the targets of the crying, that's not always the case. <laughs> this time I'm reviewing Are You The One? This is the third installment of Crying Women TV on an island. I'm surprised this show isn't more popular because the premise is genius. It goes like this. They take 10 women, 10 men, put them all in a house, and they all have a predetermined match based on, I don't know, science or some guy. Personally me, I think it's just if they have similar eyes and teeth, but I can't prove that. If they all successfully find their matches in the house, then they all get to split a million dollars. A million buckaroos. When you break that down, it's about 50k per person. They spend 10 weeks in the house, so I did the math. You're getting paid $29.71 pre-tax to try to find your perfect match. And that's if all 10 of you do it. So this adds a really interesting element to the show where they go between love and a b for trying to win a million dollars. Now I have to say, compared to Temptation Island, the pacing on this show is mwah, chef's kiss. Mwah. There really isn't a lot of filler. You know, that's the problem I find with Temptation Island. They try to like skirt this edge of trying to sort of be family friendly, but also we're doing something really weird here. This show is unapologetic and the pacing is like rapid. They don't really drag you through getting to know people. They just let you do that as they start to unravel within the house. Now, as it goes with most dating shows, people seem to, you know, fall in love pretty quickly. But the thing you have to remember is from day one, they're in there 24 hours a day and you're getting these cut down episodes. So, you know, they spend a week uninhibited with these people and they can start to develop feelings and figure out how they really feel about someone. Kind of like how a lot of you figured out how you actually felt through quarantine about your significant other damn son but you know you don't think about that when you're watching it you're just like man these people are crazy one of the biggest things that i felt watching the show is how mid-2000s this show felt i mean off rip the fashion is atrocious everyone is dressed like background in a student film i just don't even get what humans were even doing at that point in time as far as you know mainstream fashion was concerned episode 5 30 minutes 42 seconds look at my man in the beanie tie and shorts i really don't know anyone ever that's dressed like that but people that do dress like that finger your pussy with a guitar pick that's the only thing that really comes to mind when i see that outfit just playing green day on your shit do you have it <laughs> uh, whatever it's just shortly thereafter 35 35 this guy is unironically dressed like ronald mcdonald and no one blinked an eye at that he just put that shit on everyone was like yeah fire <laughs> There are other aspects of the show that become immediately apparent. First of all, the editing is very unfiltered. It's very raw. You know, modern reality TV, they kind of make people seem a certain way. This, they just rolled the cameras. And from the onset, from the way some of these people were talking, I damn near lit a cigarette. I was just, you know, I was just a little bit anxious. I don't even smoke, but I felt the need to. And I just looked at the TV and thought, oh man. We don't say that anymore. We do not say that anymore. Another thing is this show is so toxic. Unlike any other MTV show that you've seen where they get security involved, this is the one show I've seen where there's no security. I think the budget on this movie was just a camera guy. Because that dude is in everybody's business for the whole show. In ways that, you know, when you when you pay attention to the editing even just a little bit, you start to think to yourself like, hey man, how did you get in that room? And there are other moments where you look at the angle and you're like, well, um, they let you in there while they did that? You're sure they let you in? All right. Yeah, no, I'm just, I just thought that was weird that you got his taint like that. But all right. Yeah, for sure. There's no security. Every time a fight breaks out on this show, I think that dude is standing there with the camera just filming. And he's just looking around the room like, is someone going to stop that? Because the producer said he's not coming back till week 10. So it's just me and you guys. And, uh. They don't do workers comp if I get in a fight. You know, I don't want to make a, a sweeping statement or some kind of, you know, weak psychoanalysis. But, you know, this, the, the place is toxic at times. It's really toxic. Episode four, look at this screaming match between this dude, Adam, and this other girl, Brittany. I mean, this is just. It's not all about him. You can honestly go f 
yourself seriously. Honestly, I try and stay away from Brittany at all times okay. in the house because what I can't stand her. Okay. But she always follows me and brings me up in the house. And everybody <laughs> here, get back to me right now. Yeah. His eyeballs are about to come out of his head. I mean, it, I feel bad for Adam because you look at his face, you know, his face is not structured for screaming. He's got a tiny mouth and big neck. It's like his, as much as he may be able to breathe, like his face is not equipped to exhale that much air, you know, while he's screaming, like his nostrils are hella small. So, you know, I felt like he was just drowning on air the whole time he was screaming, you know, just like, I felt bad for the guy. Now it's obvious why they have these moments on the show. It's because everyone's wasted. I mean, Slush. Up. it's not like now where they try to limit the amount of drinks these people have. They just cut them loose in that house. Episode one, this dude Chris, this dude Ryan are having a conversation about how Chris is falling in love with Shanley. And the conversation they have, I don't even have to act it out. You can just roll it and you can see it. Making out with a girl. You're skewing it all up. You're ah, trying it all up. I'll you tell you what, who's your ideas of who your match is? This is one of those great human moments where alcohol eliminates memory and real connectivity it's just two bags of skin breathing at each other and making noise now something that they do on temptation island and that they do in this show which i kind of realize i think is a more old school reality tv thing to do is the sort of confessional booth where the contestants can walk in at any time hit record on a camera and start yapping this one on this show i mean it was ahead of its time in that it's your classic tiktoker setup it is just a dslr and a ring light but damn near all of these things th they look like slush because the contestants are too drunk to sit still and they either bring too many people in the room to do a confession or when they're drunk by themselves they're just right up on the camera just fucking metro booming make it boom and every, you know, every time they're blacked out they're just trying to sit there and get an opinion off but there's no words it's just sort of i i can't believe it say that about me anyone that does successfully execute on one of those you know self-tape interviews they really have some Slush. to say and it, it's always the cameras just cropped a little too tight partially because i think they really get up on the lens and they're like i'm going to say what i'm about to say right now so you put all that together and obviously this show it's gonna rope you in. It makes you a little bit anxious as you're watching it because you feel at all times something can happen. Episode five is one of these great moments where you could tell it's five weeks in. People's feelings are like beyond their head and beyond what they can put together. And they all just come pouring out over a situation that just seems so, you know, I'm, I'm gonna use a $3 word here, asinine. Oh. Asinine, it doesn't really call for that much of a reaction, but man. <laughs> This dude JJ kind of finds himself in a love triangle, so he starts throwing money at the two girls while they're arguing, which is a, just a dickhead thing to do. But it just causes a bunch of people to start crying in the house, and you have this great sequence of you know, people livid, tears in their eyes, like, what the fuck would you do that, man? You know, and that's just the start. I mean, it's crying everybody TV. A everybody can get the tears on this show, and, <laughs> and they do. There's a lot of villainry on this show. I'm not even gonna assign it to one person. You know, at, at every point in the show, someone has a villain moment. You know, there's lying, there's backstabbing, there's a whole lot of gaslighting. I mean, it just, <laughs> the list goes on. I wanna pull up a specific moment. Episode seven, 1120. Okay, so some big sh just happened and everyone gets really emotional. This dude Ryan goes to comfort this girl Jess because she'd been hyperventilating, but he's with another girl in the house. So as soon as he breaks away from Jess, Kayla's waiting right there. And she hits this golden buzzer beater line. Shayla and Chris, they and knew they'd be matched up with somebody else, so they should not be this upset. Neither should her best friend Jessica, he comforted so much. It doesn't matter. I need 20 more episodes of this. <laughs> I'm a very strong person, so you can help whoever you want to help, and I'll help myself. That's how I usually do it 22 years. I'm, I'm like really resisting doing that hack, like white girl impression, but that's Slush. just. <laughs> that's usually how I do it for 22 years. <laughs> when that's happened, I literally wrote in my phone, my note is, oh brother. <laughs> that's it. That's all I put. Oh brother. <laughs> You go even further and there's a room in the house, they all call it the boom boom room, which is so corny, but you know, that's where people go to smash. And there's this moment in episode eight, just just play it, just play it. Don't tell me what to do like that, you're not my father. 
I don't want to go to the Boom Boom Room. And then now that I think of it, I've never really wanted to go to the Boom Boom Room with him. I couldn't not laugh my ass off at these people having a serious, heated argument about the Boom Boom Room. Like, saying those words. They don't even revert to normal adult phrases, you know? Like, oh, you just want to have sex with me. Is that all it is? No, it's just... You're fucking mad at me because I don't want to go to the Boom Boom Room. No, Kayla. I didn't want to not go to the... You're the one who said you want to go to the Boom Boom Room. The whole thing feels like a Key and Peele sketch, you know? I don't want to Slush. go to the Boom Boom Room. You told me yesterday you want to go to the Boom Boom Room, and now you don't. Which one is it, Kayla? <laughs> The way this show unravels is so good because there's another mechanism to the show, which is, you know, the couples do challenges to win dates. But if you go on one of those dates, the rest of the house can vote you into what they call the truth booth. The truth booth is how they can find out if a couple is actually a match. And it's really cool because you'll see some people's romantic stories, you know, kind of kick off and then just get squashed immediately. So at all times while watching this show, you kind of find yourself trying to figure it out as well. And it gets really funny towards the second half of the show when the whole house starts turning on couples because they need to figure out if people are, are actually matched so that they can make money. Obviously, matches are made and broken. And when a couple is a perfect match, they get removed from the house and they get sent to like a honeymoon suite or something. But you bet your ass, some of those people get sent to those honeymoon suites, but they don't like the person they're with and the person they actually like is still in the house. During that later phase, the truth booth becomes especially hilarious because once the house starts really putting a lot of pressure on figuring out who's who to win the money, I mean, they cannot withhold their excitement when they break up couples or when they match them. I mean, a couple can go in and realize they're not a match and be heartbroken and it cuts back to the house and everyone's just looking at each other like, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. There's no fucking way. Her eyes are way farther apart than his eyes, right? His eyes are like, I knew it, I knew it. I, oh, give me a hug, give me a hug. I knew, I knew, I knew. I'm speaking vague about the show because I think it's worth keeping a lot of aspects of it for you to find out. I don't even want to tell you who matches with who, blah, 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 because I think you should find out for yourself. So yeah, you know, I'll give this, you know, 10 crying woman Emmys out of 10 crying woman Emmys. I mean, it's a it, it's a hilarious show, at least season one. I can't speak for the, you know, the following seasons. I'm sure they're great too. But if you need something to burn a hole in your brain, this is probably the best one. All right, guys, I'll see you next week with another video. Peace. Hey, shit's play, man, I had to switch it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, might lose a few, ask me if I give a fuck. Yeah.